I don't see a threat to our core financial institutions. So undoubtedly, there are individuals who um, could lose a lot of money if uh, Bitcoin um, were to fall in price, but I really don't see that as creating a full-blown financial stability risk. Okay, today we're talking how you should think about Bitcoin from a historical perspective. First, I want to start with a quote. First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. This is what's happening to Bitcoin right now, and the first fights are breaking out. Bulls on Bitcoin. They'll tell you that Bitcoin is headed to be the next reserve currency, but nobody goes from a historical perspective to explain how a reserve currency changes and what causes it to change. From Egyptian times until today, the only way a reserve currency changes from one to another is through war. Even, and even just war is not enough. You have to have another condition. One established dominant regional or global power and one rising power that is challenging, challenging the establishment. Now, what that shows you, just from a historical perspective, is that having a reserve currency is not just an economic tool, but it's a political tool, a way to maintain power, exert your power over population, over other countries, and a way to maintain your established position. When people talk about Bitcoin becoming reserve currency, those aspects are never taken into consideration. And I want to explain why Bitcoin has a big chance of becoming a reserve currency not because it's a better currency than anything else, even though it is one big global dominant power in the United States. We have another power trying to become a global dominant power, but it, it's not being trusted by anybody. China is not trusted by anybody because it is abusive of its power. Why wouldn't Bitcoin be the new reserve currency? Why would the world governments allow it to take over its political powers, its control over people. Well, let's look historically what happened when the first settlers started coming to, the, to North America. The first people moving to North America were religious zealots, persecuted in Europe for basically having, having the wrong religion. This, if you compare that to Bitcoin, these were the first crypto guys who figured out what Bitcoin can be and became like religious zealots about it. They were ridiculed and ignored. And now we're past that stage. A lot of people were starting to accept Bitcoin, just like North America started becoming important a couple of centuries after its discovery. The effects of that were that North America wanted to become independent from colonial power. It did not want anybody to tell it how to behave, how to tax, what laws to have, who is in power, whether it's a king or a president. It just wanted to be its own thing. Now, if you compare that to Bitcoin, it offers the same promises. It does not lend itself to being manipulated by a government. It does not allow a government to print more Bitcoin just to appease the masses. It does not allow the government to tell you where you can have your Bitcoin, where to trade it, where to exchange it, due to the fact that it's being global and decentralized. Basically, no government ha has control over Bitcoin. Very, very similar to the situation with the first settlers in North America. Now, you would think that if this is known, world governments will be against it. But the fact is, the current system, with the dollar being the reserve currency, exists not because it's fair, but because the United States is the strongest country in the world. The way the system is set up is the United States imports a lot of goods and exports a lot of dollars. And the reason for that is because all the countries after World War II agreed that all commodities, and most importantly oil, will be traded only in dollars. Now with oil declining in relevancy, that requirement of people having and trading in dollars also declines. So governments will start looking to have another currency or another alternative to the dollar so they can actually get real value for their commodities. There are alternatives in the world. There are only two. Um, one is the euro, um, you know, and the truth of the matter is there's every reason to have as much, if not more doubt about the long term value and stability of the euro than the US dollar. Yeah. And the other is, of course, Chinese currency. But the problem with Chinese currency is you have no idea what it's actually worth. 
at any given moment and you have no idea you know what what arbitrary measures the Chinese government could take to to um, revalue its its uh, obligations or or the value of the currency itself so you can't put money in that kind of a currency and as I say the only other Western alternative is the euro so in the in the short to medium term it's hard to see unless the US becomes a catastrophe it's hard to see what the alternative is to the US dollar as the world's major reserve currency other than you know gold bitcoin some kind of a whole basket of things right you know, why would canada suggest bitcoin to be the reserve currency first of all it's an oil exporter but it already knows oil is declining so having a reserve currency based on oil is not going to suit its needs its needs anymore we're going to see a lot more government clamoring to have bitcoin as a reserve currency because it's a fairer system in the distribution of wealth where when you have a system with the us dollar it's inherently unfair and advantageous to the us and lately to europe due to the us uh, due to the dollar euro relationship how that change will happen is very very interesting it's not going to be from governments choosing bitcoin as a reserve currency it will be from citizens choosing it as a reserve currency and basically taking power away from governments to manipulate their own currencies this is already happening in a lot of places in turkey in venezuela in cyprus when government started printing a lot of money we've seen huge spikes in citizens buying bitcoin as a hedge against their own government basically the price of bitcoin in many cases was an inverse relationship with the trust of the people they had in their government and this will keep on accelerating if you think of bitcoin as an island where people are welcome to come and avoid government interference in their lives what will happen is due to the fact that bitcoin is limited but easily dividable it will allow for bitcoin to appreciate more and more in value as more and more people choose to come to that island so if you the earlier you get it you get in on that island the better off you'll be the same thing happened with early settlers the earlier ones who got in in north america got the best pieces of land and of course their land appreciated in value which brought them more wealth which they would never have had in europe one for their persecution and number two because of the old system was set up to where the rich had all the land and the poor were exploited to work on that land that type of shift will happen now with citizens choosing bitcoin as their reserve currency and whether their governments like it or not so if this is happening with Bitcoin, how is the fight going to look like when there is no country for the United States to fight? We've seen in the past, even though a lot of people will tell you the United States went to, in Iraq to fight Saddam Hussein for mass weapons. The, the real reason why two years before our attack, Iraq decided to start trading oil in euro. Just that reason, just that act was the main reason for the United States invading iraq but who is the united states going to invade now if there is no country choosing bitcoin as a reserve currency but its own citizen we've already seen propaganda from christine lagarde who is currently the head of the european central bank claiming that bitcoin is used primarily in legal transactions are you worried about the bitcoin uh bubble blowing up and at what point does this need greater regulation uh, first of all i would observe that um uh... It is a speculative. It's it's a speculative asset uh, by any account. I mean, when you look at the at the most recent developments upward, and now the most recent downward trend, it's it, for those who had assumed that it might turn into a currency. Terribly sorry, but this is an asset, and it's a highly speculative asset, uh, which um, which has conducted some funny business and some interesting and totally reprehensible money laundering activity. What I'm is sorry. more could I press you on this? And who, how strict should this regulation be? And who should regulate the different parts of it? Global cooperation, multilateral action is absolutely needed, whether it's initiated by the G7, moved into the G20, and then enlarged, but it's something that needs to be. Even though we have multiple evidence that when the dollar is used for illegal transactions, nothing happens. Nobody even goes to jail. So having a currency used for illegal transactions is nothing new is in fact the norm what's going to happen is we're going to have a lot more of this 
fighting against Bitcoin. One area of growing concern, for example, is the potential for terrorists and criminals to use cryptocurrency to finance their activities. So, Dr. Yellen, can you outline some of these emerging technological concerns and how Treasury should combat new forms of terrorist and criminal financing? Um, cryptocurrencies are a particular concern. I think many are used, at least in a transactions sense, mainly for illicit financing. And I think we really need to examine ways in which we can curtail uh, their use and make sure that anti-money laundering um, doesn't occur through those channels. But the only way Bitcoin can be defeated is if all the governments in the world combine their efforts to stop it for trading at the same time. Due to the nature of Bitcoin being digital, easily transmissible, having, for example, just Europe and the United States fighting Bitcoin will not be enough because you'll be able to access Bitcoin and use it as your currency in Australia, in New Zealand, in Canada, in Brazil, in Turkey, anywhere else you like. The bridge between the old world and the new island of Bitcoin is the banking system. All the crypto exchanges that you have, like Coinbase, are regulated by governments. What that means is once a government decides that Bitcoin has won, and remember, first they ignore you, after that they make fun of you, after that they fight you, and after that they say you've won, and we just knew it all along, if your Bitcoin is in a regulated environment, it will be nationalized. Just like gold was confiscated in the 30s in the United States and in a whole bunch of other countries during wartime, Bitcoin will be confiscated from those exchanges. So my suggestion to you is if you have most of your wealth in Bitcoin, make sure you have the keys and they're not in an exchange. Only use the Bitcoin in an exchange for daily and monthly needs because this is the biggest threat to your Bitcoin. Having Bitcoin declared as a win winner effectively by a certain government and then having your Bitcoin within that government's exchange and banking system nationalized for the good of the people. I hope this historical perspective on Bitcoin and how reserve currencies change hands and what's different this time compared to any other time in history makes sense and it was helpful to you. My name is Nasco. I'm from The Great Reset. Thank you for your time. I'll see you soon.